Since I've been wading through the waters of cancelled shows and more recently cancelled superhero shows, I think this would be the most natural next video. For this one though, I think it would only be right to discuss the first two episodes and whether the show stuck the landing overall prior to cancellation because some of the most amazing aspects of the show are definitely spoiler territory. Those who know will hopefully jump in the comments to chat and those who don't will have the opportunity to be pleasantly surprised when they watch it. Sounds like a win-win-win to me. I'll just say that the first two episodes were the most perfect example of setting up a hook in all the animated series that I've ever watched. I can't think of a single scene that was wasted in those two episodes. They were efficiently used to introduce audiences to the world, build character and relationships, and set up a lot of events that were to come. Remember when all the good shows used to do that? It won me over from the beginning by not doing the Green Lantern origin. Those subscribed to my channel know that I've ranted repeatedly about hating repetitiveness in my shows. The irony I know. <laughs> Instead, the writers did something way more clever for the fans of Green Lantern and newcomers to the show. It opens by establishing the main threat for the first half of the season with the death of a Green Lantern. We see what happens to the ring when a Green Lantern dies and that scene does two things. It reveals this aspect of the lore to people unfamiliar with the Green Lantern and it also shows what type of show the audience is in for in general. They are not afraid to kill off characters in this kid's cartoon. And I say kid's cartoon very loosely because there's a lot of evidence to suggest that they were heavily targeting adults as well. Hal's introduction had the best of both worlds by showing his alter ego as an expert fighter pilot, but also that he's already Green Lantern. Ordinarily, this scene would have been his origin where he gets the ring from another dead alien Green Lantern, but we get to skip all that and just see him in action. He's been a Green Lantern for a while, so we jump straight to Hal Jordan in his prime. You can't be mad at that. From Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man to The Dark Knight to Captain America the Winter Soldier, you always have an opportunity to tell amazing stories when you don't have to do the origin, which most fans have seen a thousand times already. We also get to see his complicated workplace relationship with Carol before he's forced to fly off to Oa to address one of his past disciplinary issues. Once on Oa, this whole scene sets up the dynamic between him and Kilowog, who will be his companion through the whole series, as well well as Hal's general approach to being a lantern. Everyone knows he tends to skirt around the rules to get results, which sets him apart from everyone else. He is instantly an interesting protagonist with something different to offer from the rest of the characters, which is important when you're telling a story where a majority of the cast has similar powers. The ring from the Green Lantern who is killed at the beginning of the episode appears as Hal is being castigated by the Guardians of Oa. This scene explains the power dynamic amongst the Lanterns and the Guardians and shows that the Guardian called Ganthet is sympathetic towards Hal Jordan and his unorthodox approach to missions. This will become relevant later. I found it interesting that Appa Aliapsa, who is an extremely stuck-up guardian, has his hair literally sticking up, and Ganthet, who is more laid back, has his hair laid back down. This scene results in some really clever exposition about the universe and the different lanterns who are stationed around it. It was done in a very organic way, which is a mark of good writers. The ensuing argument about how to deal with the sporadic deaths of the green lanterns leads Ganthet to call for a recess and guide Hal Jordan and Kilowog towards a ship that could travel to the far reaches of space faster than they could fly, which is precisely what they needed in that moment. He tells them that they can't use the ship, but he is secretly counting on Hal's disobedience. He knows that Hal will steal the ship and investigate the Green Lantern deaths, which is what he wants ultimately. Kilowog also predicts Hal's mischief and joins him in stealing the ship, and off they go into the far reaches of space to investigate. I liked how these early interactions revealed all their character traits and how much they understood each other's personalities. I I also thought it was cool how the navigation computer on the ship got her name because it was an AI system but Hal thought Aya was a prettier name than AI. After flying at the speed of light, they arrive at the edge of the Guardian's frontier where the villains from the beginning are trying to kill another lantern. Hal and Kilowog are able to save him from what they discovered were red lanterns, something they previously had no knowledge of and only found out after talking to the Guardians. This is the start of the revelation that the Guardians have secrets of their own. As the ship is damaged during battle, they aren't able to return to Oa with the injured passenger. They take him back to his homeworld, which is close by, unaware that they are being tracked by the Red Lanterns. 
The three main antagonists at this point are Zalias Zox, who looks like Modok, the young recruit called Razor, and the leader of the Red Lanterns named Atrocitus. Razor is clearly conflicted about his role in Atrocitus' plan, and he proved to be the most compelling character across the whole series. He actually has a huge fan base solely based on this show, and you can watch it just for his story arc alone. The Red Lanterns and the Guardians provide hints of a past conflict where the Guardians don't seem to be so innocent. Maybe the Red Lanterns have legitimate grievances against the Green Lanterns. This was just a tease though with more information provided in future episodes. The Red Lanterns stalk them to the rescued Green Lanterns home planet which is a pretty calm and peaceful place and they threaten to destroy it if the Green Lanterns don't turn themselves over. The actions of the Red Lanterns in executing their plan are really well thought out which makes them appear more capable and menacing. It's always more interesting when you have competent villains. A sacrifice has to be made at the end of the episode which concludes the introduction to the show and provided several compelling hooks for the overall series. At this point watching the show, if you aren't hooked yet then I really don't know what to tell you. I shared this with a DC Comics hater I know and he binged the entire season in one sitting. You aren't ready for all the twists and turns the show takes and it will be well worth your while if you haven't seen it. Those two episodes aside, the show went really big and way more epic and featured Thanagarians, hot alien chicks, Guy Gardner, Sinestro among other notable DC Comics characters and had brilliant writing overall. There was a great episode called Babel where they explored how the Green Lanterns communicate across the universe. Their rings have built-in translators and during that episode's adventure, they lost their rings powers, could not communicate, and we all suddenly realized that they don't all speak English. Those are the small touches of attention to detail that I really really appreciate in shows. The prevailing thoughts and opinions on the show's cancellation were that the toy sales were not great and the live action Ryan Reynolds movie bombed really hard which ultimately killed any prospects of a season 2. Everything we've heard about Hollywood and their decision making would incline me to believe in those online rumors. In past videos, I've been glad that cancelled shows got as many episodes as they did prior to cancellation, but on this one, I have to say the series needed a second season. There was so much more story to explore, but the writers were able to give a satisfactory conclusion while also planting seeds for a future that just never came. This is a great show and I highly encourage you to check it out if you haven't. I loved it the first time, but during my rewatch to make this video, I was way more impressed and appreciative of the quality in all the departments that put it together. Please do your thing in the comments, I would love to discuss it with all of you and I will see you in the next one. Peace.